to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Proximity to Jesus does not automatically guarantee results. The disciples were close to him. They probably were sleeping on the same bed or the same area, and yet it could not work. How about Elisha and Gehazi? He took the same rod that will produce miracles, laid it upon a dead body, and nothing happened. And the prophet said, get out. It's not about the rod. There is a relationship factor in this thing. There is a knowledge factor in this. So if your life is not producing these kinds of results, number one, we have to examine if you are really in the faith. Then number two, we have to examine the extent and the kind of spiritual illumination that supports your desire for results. Hallelujah. When you watch the power holding company, there are times that the voltage is very low. It cannot power certain gadgets. Is that true? So there is light, but not enough to power that gadget. Can I tell you, please look up. There are many people in time past in the body of Christ and even in creation who have been trusted with tremendous levels of results. And yet in the midst of it, the father was not glorified. What then is the purpose of the church if he's not revealed and glorified? What then is the purpose of the business if he's not revealed and glorified? What then is the purpose of the money if it's not revealed and glorified for most of us we have forgotten that we have been bought with a price and that we are brand ambassadors do not forget that the brand you are promoting is not toyota the brand you are promoting is not mercedes-benz i know you love your car and every time you fix that mercedes-benz label so that people can see it and know it's not a fake one but let me see what you are doing to the name of Jesus. Show me the adjustments that you make to make sure that from a distance, when people see it, they know that this one is Jesus you are promoting. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing now? Immediately, you can tell what category you are in right now from this discussion. There are those who are not authorized ambassadors because they do not even know the king nor the kingdom that this is all about number two there are those who are in the kingdom but have not obtained sufficient light for their witness to be visible and then there are those who have truly paid their price but you see with increase and with result comes a lot of forgetfulness let it not be we're discussing with the leaders and the workers yesterday that when you have built houses huh, and built this and that and that when god now increases your ministry now you are a millionaire now you have money now god uses your church whatever it is and you forget that i am a brand ambassador do not make the mistake of vashti if Vashti was a bad woman from the beginning, the king would not marry her. He married her because at some point in her life, she seemed to be a worthy wife, but something happened. When she got into the palace, you know in the palace those days, you didn't do anything. Just snap your finger and everything would come. And so Vashti forgot that she was only queen because she married a king, not because she fought any war and won. Her sitting on that throne is because of relationship, not personal conquest. And the king now called for her. You are my wife. You are my image. So she just felt, no, this is your thing. I'm tired. I'm embarrassed. You can't keep falling my hand like this. I have my own agenda too. And that was the end of it. Do you know the king was so good, he did not even want to do anything to her. It was the elders who came and said, king, don't keep quiet. This will become a trend. 
she will now be promoting another brand rebellion being that brand he said let that woman get out there is no record of her saying sorry and she left now esther wanted to make the same mistake too a village girl who was taken from shushan and when she became queen when it was time her man was plotting to destroy god's people and she was the only person being his wife who had access to his ears and his heart aside from her man and mordecai would imagine that she would leverage on that influence to quickly talk to him and she seemed nonchalant and her man i mean mordecai sent her a warning he said do not think you know let it not be have you let it not be that it was for so, so such a time as this that god has raised you in other words do not think when they are done with us you will also be spared you are also a jew and esther remembered ah i've forgotten that the reason why he brought me here is to see that his purposes are preserved and she said set yourselves to fast forget about whatever royalty we are going to fast tell everyone to fast and she went before the king if i perish i perish and the king lifted the golden censer esther what is wrong and she said no problem king i just want to put a feast to honor you and let you be so well represented as captain over 127 provinces the king said my god this is i'm hearing something that i've been looking for for a long time he said and please can her man also come for that party and the foolish man also joined and went he went the first time the king was so his glory was so flaunted listen without her asking the king said can you make this happen again and she did it again and when she had worn his heart the bible says when it was now the feast of wines she now came wine i will not even talk about that there's power in wine and she came and met the king after he was happy at the height of his excitement and she says king you see that i've represented you sincerely oh yes but i have a need fine you have focused on meeting my need i must be a faithful husband what is your need there is a traitor somewhere that person wants to destroy my people and destroy the agenda of god who is that person and he said her man ah but i'm close to her man the bible says he went into the garden a wise king to think about it and her man now went and knelt down close to her to beg her when he came out and he said what is happening i'm thinking of what to do with you and you are now complicating this go and hang him the same thing he plotted for he was hung there as a testimony let me tell you you don't know how far god can go when you have vowed that your life will represent him there are battles you will not know anything about is when god god is done with them he will come to you and say let me tell you what would have happened to you last year however i went before you because your heart is determined to see me lifted hallelujah hear me please pastors apostles bishops prophets we need to understand that when god begins to produce results through our lives listen carefully most of our results in this kingdom are largely based on principles not necessarily relationships so if your results just happen like that except you present that result in a way and a manner that it spells jesus listen carefully it is possible that people can clap and you end up becoming a celebrity not an ambassador there is a difference between a celebrity and an ambassador a celebrity has influence an ambassador has purpose there is a big difference between a celebrity and an ambassador a celebrity let me repeat has influence by whatever value they provide but an ambassador has purpose that my influence is not just a waste it's not just for the sake of it it is for purpose god has not called us to be celebrities he has called us to be ambassadors if being a celebrity is part of the pathway that leads you to becoming an ambassador then he will make it happen 
this message is very powerful go and listen to it again it explains why certain people may not seem to be able to secure god's commitment there is something about their lives that is not determined to see him glorified don't forget what we are discussing tonight and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me hallelujah is someone already learning they glorified God in me. Now, please look up. If I know that my results or the glorification of the king is directly tied to my result, then I now pursue obtaining results. Not as a carnal quest. Are we together now? I pursue it because now I have purpose to what I am doing. Is someone getting me now? If I know that the healing anointing working in my life, the miraculous working in my life, influence working in my life will directly translate to Jesus being glorified. Now I will not be afraid to pursue those things. If I know being prosperous will help me to become a faithful witness, I can now obtain grace to attract prosperity without feeling ashamed because I know that the goal is not to lift up myself. The goal is to lift up Jesus. There is no shame when the goal is Jesus. Did you hear me? There is no shame. There is no regret. There is no guilt when the goal is Jesus. There is no shame. There is no guilt. There is no regret when the goal is Jesus. Hallelujah. When the goal is Jesus. When the goal is you, something is wrong. When the goal is just a name, something is wrong let me repeat myself again that there is no shame there is no guilt and there is no regret to your pursuit if your goal is jesus if you die seeking jesus there is no shame and there is no loss if you live seeking jesus there is no shame and there is no loss if because of your desire to see jesus revealed you will you give up an opportunity to be great and famous once your goal is jesus there is no shame there is no loss there is no guilt someone is learning tonight so when you come to the lord father i have come tonight i'm tired of being broke i am tired of being broke i hope you are hearing me god says i'm hearing you loud and clear lord what is it that you cannot make me prosper you even open the bible and say apostle said yesterday i'm the seed of abraham and he said listen to him he has not finished preaching listen to what he's saying now what did abraham do what did abraham do with his money what did abraham do with his energy what did abraham do with his son i will tell you what he did he took it to the altar for the god of heaven isaac would die for the god of heaven he did not mind even if it was going to affect his influence he rose up early in the morning and dragged isaac as if he was not the one who gave birth to him let's go we discussed this yesterday god was watching him let me see if he understands the purpose of the blessing let me see if he understands the purpose of the anointing let me see if he understands the purpose of fame and abraham laid him on that altar and lifted up the knife and God says stop I have seen I have seen for now I know that you fear me in that you have not withhold your, you withheld your son and he said I swear by my name that in blessing I will bless you in multiplying I will multiply you this is where we miss it I said it yesterday the works of Abraham and they glorified God in me please don't forget everything we have discussed so far defining the word glorify because it is a key word in this discussion tonight and then showing what may be wrong when the father and Jesus his son are not glorified within a, in fact John 17 and verse 1 even Jesus subscribed to this law of glorifying the Father. John 17 and verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. 
glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so why does he glorify the son that thy son will glorify thee prosper the son that thy son would glorify you make the son famous lord lift up koinonia that koinonia may glorify you let me tell you when this becomes your prayer you step back and watch god his jealousy clear every mountain before you please keep that scripture let's not just brush it there glorify thy son give thy son the healing anointing give thy son influence take your son here does not just mean male anybody male or female are we together give your daughter a good husband that she may glorify you and god will say amen before you say amen but you pray a nonsense carnal prayer oh god i'm tired of suffering god said you are not serious when it becomes lined up with purpose remember the difference between a celebrity and an ambassador both of them have influence but one has purpose most people want to be celebrities and not ambassadors so when you build the church or you build the empire you make the mistake of nebuchadnezzar now you raise a stature and it is not jesus by the time we watch the people building nebuchadnezzar statue we don't know what else he's building we have to keep watching because we see him using gold and it is safe to assume that he's using it to exalt jesus and somewhere along as we see that carving we start seeing a face that does not look like jesus and the man was carving himself how about the nation of israel that used the gold that god gave them when they started building an image you would think it's jesus and all of a sudden they built a calf and began to bow to him you are the one who brought us out you can use money to build your image like nebuchadnezzar don't be too quick to laugh at nebuchadnezzar you can use your gift you can use ministry to build your face apostle joshua selman and god says that is it that was what all what your fasting and prayer you fasted almost as if you will go blind this is all what is about cars houses crowd anointing is that it from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus oh jesus listen for many of you while you are seated here let me tell you why it looks like god is not answering your prayer it is because he has found out that there is nothing in your life that is interested in glorifying the lord there are many people here you're not be, you're not prospering it's an act of god's mercy to you to still keep you relevant because if money touches your hand with this state of heart you will be a casualty first to yourself jesus at the center of my life Jesus at the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus oh Jesus Koinonia please hear me let me tell you this if you think what God is doing in this ministry it's just because a man of God is powerful called Joshua Selman think again look at me this is all of me you are seeing it's not like there's part of me somewhere this is it you are seeing you are intelligent and you went to school can a man like this produce this result you are seeing no there are some results that men cannot produce my dear people even if you are not spiritual we are educated let me tell you the secret when you hide behind the cross and you say father it is for your glory 
that this is about this business i want to set up i want to establish the biggest mall in zaria the biggest mall in nigeria and the desire is that through the presentation of that excellence or whatever it is there are people who covenanted with god and say lord your house is in need of resources can you trust me and they meant it and god said that's it clear the way and they woke up in the morning and stumbled into business opportunities that changed their lives in one night when you are talking to them as business people you will see the gaps in their knowledge you will know they are not supposed to get this result however the master has chosen because of the sincerity of their heart is someone learning now this is one of the biggest secrets in this ministry believe me that that lust and that desire i want this i want that i want this and you find out that you are strangely producing results powerful results but nobody in your family is safe through your result all that is happening in your family is just jealousy and envy something is wrong your presentation is not such your presentation is showing them i am better than you not jesus is the one who is behind this is someone learning now a man of god met me one day and he had followed me teaching and i i, I told him i said if god says i should close down koinonia now i will do it and he laughed he said apostle you are bold though i won't make that kind of statement and then by next week come and find out that uh, what if the devil uses a wrong you know image and lies to you and all of that and i told him what are you afraid of your statement is a product of the fear of something what are you afraid of that's what you should solve okay let's assume it was a lie and satan said it and you close it then what your ego your reputation that's what needs deliverance it's not about closing and opening the ministry no at all for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see before we continue i want you in one minute to pray and say lord i don't know what may have been the purpose for my desire for power and for results some of you you just want to cure hardship some of you you are tired of being looked down on these things are not enough reason please pray in one minute lord search my heart yet again man of god are you praying Apostle, I want to travel to America. What for? Apostle, I want to marry a multi-millionaire. Nothing wrong with that, but what for? Apostle, I think I need a car. Or I need a new car. What for? I want to complete my building project by the end of this year. What for? Do you want to be a celebrity or an ambassador? what are you looking for fame or to see the purposes of god lifted through your life someone pray hallelujah hallelujah do you understand all i've taught so far there is nothing wrong in desiring results i've shown you from the scripture he says we are salt and he says we are light are we together in fact he even says if your salt loses its saltiness its ability to preserve its ability to add taste and value you will be thrown underfoot and trampled by men 
so god desires us to produce results more than we'll ever desire but first things first the first thing to fix is to know that it is beyond seeing your good works they must glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah let's touch on one more thing before we pray hmm. <laughs> I desire the Father to be revealed and glorified through my life. I desire Jesus to be revealed and glorified. It is our theme. It is our anthem in this ministry. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Now, very quickly, I want to show you, since we have settled the fact that God is not withholding results from your life, the only thing is withholding is you destroying yourself and Jesus not being glorified through it now that we have gotten that clear let us take it a step further Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 there are three biblical um, expressions of the glory of God through the life of a man if it is true that god can be glorified in a man then we need to be able to look in detail what are the expressions of glory that can find and must find expression in my life for god to be glorified and here prophet jeremiah taught us number one thus saith the lord let not the wise man the word glory there is the word boast let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so the first expression of glory that can help the saints to be glorified is wisdom he's not saying wisdom is wrong he's just trying to rearrange it relative to something higher which we just addressed so the first is let not the wise man glory in his wisdom everyone say wisdom number two neither the mighty man glory in his might say power that is the second expression of glory and then number three let not the rich man glory in his riches say wealth now please look up these three expressions must be captured in your life if the father is to be glorified in your life number one wisdom number two power number three riches or wealth give us amplified of that statement please jeremiah 9 23 let's see it from amplified it says thus saith the lord let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and his skill number two let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power number three let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory or boast in his temporal satisfaction and earthly riches relative to these three the bible says next verse 24 so it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so that is the first expression of glory wisdom number two let not the mighty man amplified says the one who is powerful so power every dimension of power supernatural power most especially is another expression of the glory of god and the third dimension is wealth hallelujah let me tell you what this is supernatural power seems to be the zenith that is what controls the spiritual realm wisdom is what controls the intellectual realm wealth is what controls the physical realm so he says if you want to see the glory of god revealed in and through your life holistically there must be captured in your life and your experience supernatural power you must sustain the ability to bring the realm of the spirit in its entirety under divine obedience you must be able to conquer the intellectual realm 
by outsourcing a level of wisdom that is higher than human wisdom and then the resources that take away limitation from your life physically that anyone who is able to capture within his space power wisdom and wealth and then on top of that the source and the basis for your confidence does not even become those things but that you know god now your life can be a true reflection of the glory of god i don't have all the time to deal with all of these things but we'll just touch a bit let's start with wisdom wisdom i've done several teachings on wisdom you can get them but just to touch a little bit on wisdom as an expression of god's glory hallelujah in revelation chapter 5 when you read from verse 12 revelation chapter 5 saying with a loud voice just let's go back to amplified uh, let's go back to kjv i meant to say verse 12 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us now power riches wisdom strength honor glory blessings now you see that wisdom was one of the seven things that were purchased for us in redemption are we together so by redemption every believer in christ should have access to wisdom every believer in christ paul was praying over the church in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 i hope we're able to manage those outside if there is ever a need to squeeze them in here even if it's temporarily when the season and um it will be fair enough it's better for them to stay somewhere standing than to let's be sure that no matter what it is especially those who are at the edge that they are not affected by the rain it's better to be inconvenienced inside than to be convenienced outside so those who are especially at the edge of the canopy my apologies just to break so that we help these people let's not allow them even if it's to be at the at the edge no problem we all know that is the season and then there's the crowds of people everywhere it's only responsible that at least we are thoughtful praise the name of the lord are we together so paul was praying and he said ephesians 1 17 that the father of our lord jesus the father of glory may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom so wisdom is not just a mental state there is the spirit of wisdom you find that in isaiah 11 also and verse 2 the spirit of dominion the spirit of the lord then the next you find is the spirit of wisdom and understanding hallelujah this is very powerful and james chapter 3 from verse 15 the bible there we are not really doing an extensive study on wisdom just to connect it to the teaching on glory the bible tells us that there are three kinds or three levels of wisdom apostle james now that the first is the wisdom that is earthly earthly wisdom sophia it is called number two or four kinds really wisdom that is sensual just brain work common sense then there is wisdom that is devilish or demonic verse 16 we're reading to 17 it says for where there is envy and strife and there's confusion and every evil work then 17 says but the wisdom that is from above so there is the wisdom that is from above supernatural wisdom there is earthly wisdom there is sensual wisdom are we together and then there is demonic wisdom so that there is no confusion as to what we are talking about we are talking of wisdom that descends from above the bible says it is first pure peaceable gentle everybody say wisdom in first corinthians chapter 2 we'll begin our reading from verse 6 let's hurry up please first corinthians chapter 2 we'll begin from verse 6 apostle paul was teaching us and he said how be it we speak wisdom 
among them that are mature or perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught. seven it says what we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery and then he says even the hidden wisdom of god that was ordained or designed for our glory are we together now very very important so there is the wisdom that connects to the glorification of the saints so that in their being glorified the father will be glorified the wisdom that has been ordained for our glory is someone learning already say wisdom very very important in mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 the bible says when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and even such mighty works that are wrought by his hands there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works hallelujah what wisdom is this there is a level of wisdom listen to me ladies and gentlemen there is a level of wisdom that can be made manifest through a man and through a life and a destiny that is higher than your age your gender your exposure your level of experience and when you access that kind of wisdom please look at me it will be impossible for your life to be ordinary that anyone who sees that wisdom being displayed in and through your life they will have to glorify your father which is in heaven everybody say wisdom very very powerful let me give you two definitions of wisdom very quickly i love this definition it came in the place of prayer that wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word please write it down wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life problems i will take it again wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems is called wisdom you know it is wisdom when you are able to make with it accurate decisions you know it is wisdom when you are able to use it to provide solutions someone say wisdom please look up decisions decide destiny i have taught you this again and again and that your decisions are products of your orientation products of the information that mold and make your belief system when you are able to access superior wisdom the wisdom of god it translates in the kind and quality of decisions that you make number two it it the wisdom of god is at work in your life to the degree to which you are able to provide supernatural solutions to problems in your own life and problems in the lives of others that means if your life is full of problems without answers there is bankruptcy of divine wisdom if your decisions keep leading you to pain and regret and trouble it means you are you don't have wisdom or you are using another kind of wisdom maybe earthly wisdom maybe sensual wisdom common sense maybe even diabolic wisdom but the wisdom from above will always take you above are we together yes wisdom most believers do not know how to access the wisdom of god that translates into making quality decisions personal decisions ministry decisions family decisions financial decisions corporate decisions and then provide supernatural solution let me tell you the truth 
in these end times if you depend just on wisdom that has come through your age or wisdom that has come just from school alone as important as that is or wisdom that has come through common sense get ready to recycle pain in your life because there is a way that cement right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death the wisdom of god is so powerful it will not look like it yet that is the way is someone hearing me the wisdom of god when supernatural wisdom comes god will make you walk around jericho seven times instead of fighting physically if you fight with the sword even if you win you will bleed there will be injuries and yet god can give you sweatless triumph at the instance of wisdom there are some battles just because they are battles does not mean you must fight mm -mm. the most important thing is that you win we need to pray and cry for wisdom my prayer as a leader my prayer as an individual all the time if i pray for myself is that god will give me wisdom i have seen the fruit of wisdom so far i have seen the fruit of wisdom in this ministry i have seen the fruit of wisdom in my life are we together now there are results that only wisdom can bring i wish i had the time please get my message on wisdom i've taught on that you need to pray and cry and say lord i am tired of making foolish decisions there are decisions that keep recycling my pain people I, I make decisions every day and those decisions don't move me forward you need to start making qualitative decisions one decision that buys 10 years for you one decision that buys 20 years one decision that buys long life one decision that buys influence you can have one decision like Esau that will sell your lifetime. Do you know it was a decision Esau took? One decision using a temporary, carrying a temporary, a permanent treasure to solve a temporal problem. We were saying it, I think it was with the leaders, that there are people, the moment they are hungry, they look at anything around their life that they can sell quickly. They will carry a laptop of 130,000 and sell it for 10,000 because they want to smoke with it or eat with it. That is the Esau dimension of foolishness. Are we together? And you will eat in a restaurant 5,000 or whatever it is and your laptop is gone with all the information there. There are people who carry wristwatches, carry their shoes and sell it. There are many other people who are making unwise decisions like leaving God for money. Foolish decision. Is that true? Allowing your spiritual life to go down because you are looking for fame. Foolish decision. We need to pray and cry for wisdom. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Living in today's world requires working in wisdom because the variety of options are many and all of them look like god is later you'll find out that you have been wasting your time so that you would not waste 15 years of your life only to turn back and find out that i took a path that i thought was god but was not god there are preachers making decisions that will end them in trouble there are businessmen making decisions that will end them in trouble some of us today our loved ones respectfully speaking they took decisions that brought us into all kinds of demonic things decisions and then supernatural solutions how will people ignore you when your life begins to command solutions by the wisdom of god you are teaching you are guiding that the opening of your mouth are we together now is the communication of divine wisdom please lay your hand on your head if you don't mind and pray in one minute father i receive an impartation of divine wisdom i confess that my decisions are not superior it is very clear that from my decisions i have made mistakes some of you your wrong decisions is why you are where you are right now it removed 10 years from your life it removed glory and honor from your life someone is praying lay your hands on your head and decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ the glory of god 
revealed and expressed as the wisdom of God must find expression in my life tired of wrong decisions tired of wrong decisions tired of a life that is barren of results someone is praying Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.